Well, this is exciting. Mid Journey V5 is now live. And I've got some prompting tips for you because prompting is working a little bit differently than it previously did, at least for now. Per Mid Journey, short prompts may not work as well. You should try to write longer, more explicit text about what you want. For example, cinematic photo with dramatic lighting. We hope to have a friendly default style for V5 before we switch it to default. When this happens, we will still let you turn it off and get back to something like this raw mode today. So for now, at least, prompts in that more stable diffusion style will probably get you closer to the desired output that you're looking for. It has been speculated in the past that Midjourney has a bit of a hand-holding feature, something that will fill in the blanks for you if you have a shorter or undescriptive prompt. It's kind of the thing that gives Midjourney its Midjourney look. But I am excited that in the future we'll be able to toggle this feature on and off, giving you know the opportunity for new people to get fantastic images and those of us who have spent a lot of time in Midjourney to really, really hone in on the images that we are looking for. So the first thing you should be aware of is that V5 is not set by default. So you'll need to go into slash settings and set it to V5. Alternately, you can just leave it on V4 and use the command dash dash V5 to toggle back and forth between the two. As far as prompting in V5, Midjourney has said, in V5, the words in your prompt should be pretty powerful. You have to prompt what you wanna see. This means genres and styles from your prompt should shine. Your prompt needs to be rich, specific, and relevant. The effect of the tokens will be greater. If you don't specify an artist name, media source, or art style, you'll get the system default, which is photographic. So let's take a look at some examples here. Uh, I started off with a very simple prompt, 1970, a tough guy in a leather jacket stands next to a cab. And as promised, Midjourney did indeed output a photographic style. It looks great. Everything, you know, wardrobe, hairstyle, background is consistent with that 1970 prompt. So let's try adding some stylization to it and see what happens. So for the first experiment, I just added style by Brandon Wolfel to the end of it. Brandon Wolfel is a photographer whose work you may have seen on Instagram or even YouTube. I mean, it's kind of known for having the look of blue and purple neons mixed in with warm yellow overhead lights. You should definitely check out his work. Uh, I'll leave links below. So this was the output and indeed it stayed very consistent with the 1970s look, but added in Brandon's overall aesthetic as well. So next up was swapping out the name Brandon Wolfel for Darwin Cook. Darwin Cook being a pretty famous illustrator who sadly passed away a few years ago, but this was our output. Um, yeah. Again, everything still stays consistent to that 1970s look. And now we have a very comic-y illustrative look. Midjourney's ultimate goal, and this is something that they've stated a few times, is to have much more of a linguistic approach to prompting, kind of like you're just chatting with Midjourney. Or, you know, in my dream version where I just copy and paste a page from a script and it outputs images. We'll see what happens when we hit like V7. We're gonna take a look at that in one second, but first I wanted to roll back to that more conversational tone. So funny enough, over the last couple of nights, I finally got around to watching the John Wick movies. I don't know, I just never got around to watching them. So because I have John Wick on the brain, I decided to use that to try out the more conversational style with Midjourney and see what the output Output would be. So I tried out a prompt, a cinematic still shot of an assassin dressed in a black suit, walking through a busy hip nightclub with dancers all around him. He's holding his gun and has an intense gaze as he searches for his target in the style of John Wick, stylized 1000. And this was our output, which is crazy accurate. In fact, that first and that fourth image look like they could definitely be screenshots from the film. Not 100% on that second one, but hey, mid-journey gonna mid-journey. Going back to our illustrative style, I just added Darwin Cook illustration and then the exact same prompt, including style by John Wick at the end and ended up with this, which is super cool. Darwin Cook always had that sort of 60s pop art style. This gives us a kind of a cool look at what John Wick might have looked like if it were, you know, a 60s comic book. Trying some other things out with stylized, a beautiful retro futuristic female android, white with black accents, plastic skin, lens eyes, panels, cable, connection lines, gear in a vibrant retro futuristic environment, which again is in that very photographic style. I was curious to see what would happen if you called out a lower level of technological capture. So uh, I added in Super 8 film to the end of the prompt and ended up with this. It didn't really do much, but based off that top image, I think what happened is that Midjourney parsed Super 8 as the J.J. Abrams film Super 8. So I tried. Polaroid instead and ended up with these images and that did have an effect if you notice in the background here everything becomes much more analog in terms of its look and overall the color palette changed into more of a retro feel. Additionally we have 
all the aspect ratios, and I mean all of them. This got me super excited. If you watched one of my previous videos on cinematic prompting in Mid Journey, you'll know that I'm a big fan of Cinescope, that big widescreen look. I've been kind of cheating it by using the aspect ratio of 2.1, but the actual Cinemascope is in 21.9, so um, we can now get 21.9. So immediately I had to put a Western in at 21.9 and the results were really cool. I think what impresses me the most is how on point Mid Journey is with its compositional skills. I mean, everything in here is in the rule of thirds and yeah, it looks fantastic. But of course I wanted to try out some funkier ones like here's 10.2, it's kind of more in a panoramic setting. Uh, so it looks like Mid Journey can't really manage to get there yet. There's a limit to how far out it'll generate an image. We'll see if that updates in the future, though I don't see that as being a very high priority thing for them. Here's another one at 410, which again, I'm really, really impressed with its compositional skills. Like everything is lined up in a rule of thirds for that particular aspect ratio. Why would you ever make something in this aspect ratio? I don't know. I mean, bookmarks maybe? Who knows? Like the fact that you can do it is pretty awesome. So there's a lot more going on in V5 and I'm keeping a close eye on the Prom Chat channel to pick up some tips and tricks to pass along to you guys. So if you'd like to catch them, please do consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And hey, have you seen what's going on with Dali? You might wanna check out the latest update and compare it to the images that we just saw. That video is coming up right now. My name's Tim, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.